We are recording the interview of Colleen Schoonover. The interview is being conducted by John Granada and Adrian Hill from Wright State University Veterans Voices Project. The interview is being recorded at VFW Post 3283 in Huber Heights, Ohio. It is approximately 8.30 p.m. on July 1st, 2014. All right. Where and when were you born? I was born in Ohio. Oh, Iowa. Sorry. I was born in Iowa in 1987. Okay. Who are your parents and what are their occupations? It's tricky. Um, my mom was Sharon Gay or Clark. And my dad was Charles Clark. And when? And what do they do? I don't know. You don't know their face? Okay, that's cool. Uh, who are your siblings, names, and uh, if any of them served any of the military branches, can you tell us about it? My little sister started in the Army, didn't pass AIT. What was her name? Her name was Tiffany Henderson. Okay. My stepbrother. You said, he, oh, before you go on, you said she didn't make it out of AIT, so did she get out right after that? Or did she switch? She couldn't make it past AIT. So she just got out then? So she was a word that I literally probably should never put in this <laughs> interview. <laughs> she had knee issues. Okay. Okay. Just put it at that. Okay. Um, knee issues couldn't make it out of AOT. My little brother was stationed in Colorado. What branch? Army. Army? Okay. You know um, base? <clears throat> I'm not sure what the base was in Colorado. Okay, that's fine. And what was his name? Dustin Calvert. Okay. Um, Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Uh, what were you doing before you entered the service? I was working at Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. Really fascinating. I can make a, How? a latte like a boss. Yeah. Boss. What? <laughs> How old were you then when you joined? When you enlisted? Uh, 20. <coughs> so you waited a little bit after high school? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, which branch in the military did you serve? Active duty Army. Okay. Uh, when did you enlist? 2008. Okay. Um, why did you, why did you choose to go to the Army? Because I couldn't pay for college. Okay. All right. Uh, what happened when you departed from training camp uh, and during your early days of training? Literally or mentally? Both. Literally, I waited for a long time. It was about four or five days before I actually went to basic. Were and you mentally, at like in processing? Yes, okay. I was in processing for a few days. Is like the MEPS? Yeah, I was in maps. Yeah. Mentally, it was honestly like, what the fuck <laughs> did I do? Honestly. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you recall any of your instructors in uh, AIT? If so, what were they like? In AIT, I remember the female actually because she had a diamond in her tooth. And she was smoking me, it like glittered in the sun. Yeah, that's really messed up, but I remember that. Okay. Uh, did you receive any specialized training? If so, what? Um, your AIT. Training? Like, what were you? Like, what was your MOS? I was a cook. Okay. So. What was your, I mean, like, anything about your. I need to golf. Okay. Anything about your training that was, like, interesting that you. I mean. I learned how to make a cake. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, did you guys do like... I turned 21 when I was making a cake. Yeah. Did you guys... When you guys are there doing your training for cook, for that, for that MOS, do you guys do like um, like mass quantity type stuff? Do you learn about temperatures? I mean, what is it... What is it that they teach you there, I guess? You learn about everything when it comes to like... When it's acceptable to 
produce the food out to the masses, basically. Like what's acceptable? Yes. Like, <laughs> if you ever got served runny eggs, it's because it's gonna cook on the table, which is why we always serve runny eggs. Because it's gonna cook on the table? What do you it's mean, like a heating lamp? It cooks your oh, food okay, gotcha. as you're sitting yeah, there, right. so you don't want to cook like fully cooked food. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. How long was your training? Uh, Just for AIT. Uh, I think I want to say like seven, eight weeks. Okay, and then basic was nine. Yeah. Okay. How was uh, adapting to military life, including the physical, uh, the barracks life, food, and social? A lot easier than adapting life after high school. Really? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Did the, um, like the conformity, the, uh, you know, the, you kind of have to be somewhere all the time, like the, what is that, like structure? Mm -hmm. Was that, did you like that about it, or was that kind of overbearing? I mean, I'm kind of like beyond time, so I think it was more of an easier transition than it was for me to be in civilian. Mm -hmm. It was a lot harder for me to transition from civilian life to military life. What was the hardest part about that? Of military life? Mm -hmm. um, I think it was more I had to fold stuff a certain way, honestly. It wasn't the time schedule because I'm 15 minutes early for everything, no matter what, so... So like the specifically how they want stuff done yes. type of stuff that you didn't like? It was like? getting okay. used to actually having to do stuff a certain yeah, way. The attention to detail yes. part of it? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything uh, you want to share about some a story or anything like that from your actually basic? I mean, you can tell them it's not, you know, you can go in depth about it, it's no big deal. I know, I, I had an easy basic. I know that. Where was your basic at? Fort Jackson. Okay. Um, I did have problems in basic, obviously, because you put women in power and they're always... Not necessarily use the power for a good thing, but um, I had issues with this one chick that tried to get me in trouble for something that she was doing. She didn't want to admit that she was doing it, but I ended up being in power anyway, so I guess it didn't work out in her favor, but... <laughs> um, I honestly don't think basic training should ever be co-ed, ever. Really? I'm sorry, no. Because most of our problems dealt with bringing guys into the picture where chicks had like a thing for the guy and then they tried to pin it on somebody else because they were a girl in power and it just... More conflict? Yes. Okay. Did you like. make any good friends in BASIC that you still stay in contact with? Or? In BASIC, no. Okay. <clears throat> I can fully admit in BASIC, absolutely not. They were crazy. All right, now where did you serve? Home station and also abroad? I was with, um, it's actually JBLM in Washington State, which is Joint Base Louis, Louis <coughs> McCord. Um, and they just recently changed that, but they were joint base with um, Fort Lewis, Washington, and the Air Force Base, which they just now converged. That's the C-17 base, correct? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. pretty sure. Um, and then abroad, I was with 17 Fires 5-3, which was... Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Which uh, was an artillery. Yeah. All right. Overseas, uh, what are some of the memories you have of that experience? Um, it was different. Different than 
home life. Like like military garrison life, you mean? No, just mm -hmm. life in general. Okay. Because you were able to go to the store if you wanted something there, you had to wait if they didn't have it. And you definitely had the more, you had an appreciation for everything that you had here. Being able to go to the store and picking up a pack of like anything you wanted, basically. You didn't have that opportunity there, so. <laughs> How was it adapting to you know the combat lifestyle? <clears throat> it was easier, I think. It, like back then, you, like in Afghanistan, you didn't have to worry about anything but your major monetary items. Like okay. for me, it was like shampoo and conditioner. Um. As long as you had like shower stuff, you were good. Like here, you have to worry about so much more, so. Yeah. Um, before we go any further into your uh, deployment experience, where uh, exactly did you serve? I don't know if we covered that beforehand. Mm -hmm. I know it was at, yeah, you can go ahead. Just specifics. Um, we were mostly stationed at Spin Bulldeck, Afghanistan. Which is in what province? Kandahar province. <laughs> um, but Spin Baldak is right on the Pakistan border. Okay. On the southern Pakistan border, so. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to put that on there, yeah. Uh, at any time, were you on the front lines? Uh, any combat action did you have to witness? Um. Did you, it's a little bit different for this kind of, I mean, were you out on missions, yeah. basically? Were you just on the FOB or were you out on missions? Regularly, I was out on missions, okay. yes. Can you go into detail about that at all, about what that was like? We were, we basically like, searched what did you do? for IEDs. Mm -hmm. So when we found the IEDs, we called an EOD and they detonated the IEDs. Mm -hmm. So we were the people that literally searched for the bombs. Mm -hmm. And I drove a truck that searched for a bomb. So. What's so originally was that your? No. You knew that was your job going into it. No. Okay. So when you went overseas, what did you like? As you were in the process of getting ready to go overseas, what did you think your job was going to be? We didn't know. You didn't know. Honestly. Okay. Did your whole we, unit in general know? No. Okay. We had no idea. We trained for IED hunting when we got to Afghanistan. Oh okay. Wow. That was when we found out. So. Yeah. I mean, was that kind of a shock to you? I mean, because you, you joined the military going into a cook MOS, you probably hadn't thought that there was no way that you would end up doing that over there. Shock, yes. Did I get used to it? Yes. Um, it was definitely not what I expected. Okay. Am I regretting it? No. So. How did you feel, how did it make you feel when you found out, you know, you were going to be doing something completely different than what you were trained to do. Holy shit. Were you mad about it or were you just kind of like, well... I mean, I mean I... you joined the army to do whatever they wanted, so mm -hmm. you just kind of... I guess we kind of went with the flow. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Where are you at? Well, yeah, you can ask it. Um, if you did see any combat, uh, how did you feel if you witnessed, or if you did witness any casualties or destruction at any point in time? I know you said, I'm sure you were there when the EOD detonations went off. How did that feel experiencing in a wartime and in, in, in a actual in the AOR? Just even if it wasn't aimed toward you, you know, still bombs going off. Honestly, like our platoon was pretty fortunate. We didn't have any major detonations. I mean, we did have a couple times where we called an EOD and they were able to detonate, but we didn't have anything where we blew up people. So 
we were pretty fortunate, I would say. So you guys didn't have any hits on your vehicles then? I mean, we, we had a couple, but they were, they were minor. Okay. In comparison to everything else. So, so, you, so you were out there on mission when, you know, some of your guys got hit then? Yeah. So how did that, I mean, the initial thought, like you hear it go off, then what, you know? Were you scared? Were you worried? Were you sad? I mean, just kind of go through how that felt for you. Shock? Hmm. Does that count? Yeah. I mean, you don't really, when stuff like that happens, you don't really know how to think. Mm -hmm. really. What was the feeling when you came across your first IED? Holy shit. What do you do? Mm -hmm. was, was the first one you guys came across a hit or did you find it? We found it. Okay. So, I mean, you guys had to feel good then, right? Well, yeah. That nobody got injured. Yes, and our trucks were intact. But that was probably four months in. So, it was kind of like, how long is this going to take to death at this right. baby? Yeah. So... <laughs> You know, like, I don't know. It's... Does, does it feel rewarding, though, once you actually, you find it, and then they, you, you call EOD in, they do their job. Did you feel at the same time, you know, because not only did you possibly save your platoon's life, or the people coming behind you, but also, I mean, civilians mm -hmm. in the, you know, Afghani population. I would say it was rewarding, yes. But at the same time, it's so common over there that it's just another day. Yeah. So After you got used to it, it was kind of like, eh. Yeah, it was just kind of like, oh, you got to sit here for four hours. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like once you found one, yes. after a while, you're just like, damn it, we found another we gotta one. we got to clear this, baby. Yeah. I'm going to be out here for a while, mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh, what kinds of friendships... Uh, and camaraderie did you um, form while serving and with whom? I actually married my not medic. He was not a medic in my platoon, but uh, I think his exact words were he didn't feel comfortable being my medic in the same platoon. That's what it was. Conflict of interest? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't in your platoon. He was in your. He was in my company. Okay, which is a a, a group. Of, how many platoons were in your company? We had three. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. He Did... was. I want to say third, second platoon, second platoon. <laughs> um, but I made a lot of friends, but I also made a lot of people that I thought were friends that weren't friends. It's a lot different being a female in a combat environment, especially when there's only six of us and only three of us went out on a mission, mm -hmm. that it just, you found a lot of people that you thought were friends that weren't. And you didn't find out until after you got back. So. Did you meet your husband overseas or Home station. On station before I we went overseas. Okay. So. Awesome. Did you have a relationship before you left? Before you went overseas? Yes. Okay. We were really good friends. Before. Actually, we were dating before we went overseas. And then while you're overseas and stuff happened. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're still married. Yeah. Well, at least you got close to somebody, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, how did you stay in touch with family and friends back home? Um, I would like to see care packages, but that wasn't the case. My care packages was mostly from my now husband. Um, I actually became less close with my family overseas. I don't talk to any of them now, so, well, Mostly my mother, so. And you said your now husband sent you care packages overseas, are you saying when he was on no, leave? No, his or? mom and his grandma. Oh, okay. His, my husband's family now 
okay. sent me stuff. So they knew of you before yes. the deployment. Okay. Yes. Okay. What did you do for recreation or when you were off duty in your spare time? Uh, worked out. Okay. I went to the gym a lot. I miss it, honestly. Having the time to be able to unwind, go to the gym. It's a lot harder now, but. Now, other than the gym, was there a place that, you know, the base could go or. We had an MWR. We play, I think it had like Xbox computers where you can Skype and do all that stuff and um, Do you have a library or anything there with it? It had books in the MWR, but it didn't <laughs> Not much No, but outdated books. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't even remember one title that was in the MWR most of you're like, oh my god, an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was the biggest place for us because it was a really, it was really small. And the MWR was right next to the gym, so it was, <laughs> you got done working out and then you could hang out in the MWR and you could chill and talk to people and... Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is there anything else about your, you know, time in combat or overseas that you'd like to share? Any stories or just experiences that you would want people to know? Are we being literal or are we being... However you interpret it, you know, however you want to, if you've got anything you want to share about it. Honestly, it being, it sucks being a woman in a combat like environment. It did suck. Why is that? Fuck. We can take a short break. We'll see. Alright, All right, we're back from a short break. Uh back to what we were asking you. What are some of the experiences that not only you experienced, but you'd wish to share with future people to understand and see what you've been through? Um, I would say being a woman in a combat platoon sucked. <laughs> and it sounds terrible, it really does. It has nothing to do with No, it has everything to do with a woman. It just, it was not, we had six total in our company. Three went on. Um, actual, like, out of the wire missions on a regular basis, and it sucked. <laughs> it was terrible. I had more rumors than I can count started and it was <laughs> I mean uh, rumors about you having relationships with other people is that what you're talking about yeah okay and that was obviously not pleasing everyone was false and it sucked yeah yeah okay is there anything else you wanted to add about add to that or were there any good experiences that you had where you know life memories will where you won't forget? I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't. But I mean You can't change ideals, and unfortunately, those were not the ideals at the time. And let me just say, I had rumors I slept with more people than I can count, and none of them were true. So, okay, I'm gonna move on to uh, after deployment. Yes, coming home. So, uh, how did you guys or your platoon return home? Was it you by yourself? Was it? 
late to start over. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to figure out my phone, babe? <laughs> Turn it off. Okay. okay. Sorry. Alright. Uh, how did you return home? Did you uh, come back by yourself? Did you come back as a platoon? And did you take an aircraft back? How did you get home? Um, from Spinboldak, we ran Chinooks over to Kandahar, which was awesome. At least most of us did. There was one platoon that actually had to drive, which my husband was the best shitty platoon. <laughs> They had to drive back, but we drove through Nooks, which was pretty cool, I would have to say. Um, you got to fly in some? Yes, we got to fly in Chinooks with all of the crap that we brought over there. Um, and then we flew back in, I don't know, I don't know what planes there were. You took a plane from um, CAF then? Yeah, from Airfield? CAF to... Uh, Kyrgyzstan? Yeah, Kyrgyzstan. Okay. And so Manus, wasn't it the Air Force yeah. Base there? Okay. Probably, and then from yeah. Manus, you went to? Uh, America? Amer you went straight from Manus to the uh, United States? With the occasional field stop. Okay. Yeah. Was uh, it a military aircraft or was it a... Uh... No, the military aircraft lasted until uh, Manus. And then from Manus, we went American. Well, uh, international flight. Okay. I think it was like Ryanair, I think, which by the way, they have shitty food, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible food. Um, no, like, but... here, take this boiled chicken. <laughs> like, eat this. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Before we uh, move on from that, what was that like, um, you know, knowing you were leaving Afghanistan, that initial military Amazing. flight? Amazing. I mean, you know you were out of this combat zone, you guys were alive, you made it. I honestly have more pictures from the flight back than I ever had anywhere else. Okay. Cause you're like, oh my god, I get to go home. Yeah, like it's over. Yeah. I can go to a gas station and get like a hot dog. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> how were you received by your family and friends and? We're back from a short uh, technical difficulty again, and uh, go up with the question. All right. Uh, what are some of the life lessons you learned from your military service? Military is so much easier than civilian life. Is that legit? Like for real? Can you elaborate a little bit? Um, if I have a cold, I can go to sick call. When I'm civilian, I'm like, I have a cold. I really don't want to go to the hospital for it. So let's just take some cough drops. Good. Yeah. I mean, how has it um, has it affected your life in any other way about how you see things? I mean, being over there, you know what I mean? Like from being over there and coming back here, has that affected your view on the United States or on reality or anything? I don't think we should be over there at all. Okay. Seriously. Nobody wants us over there. People are dying. And it's pointless. So. Why do you say it's pointless? We spent 12 months over there and not one person, I think, well, maybe one, one person while we were over there appreciated us being over there. So as why, far as the local population? Yes, yeah, so okay. why are we there? Yeah. We're dying over there, and it's pointless. Okay. All right. Uh, what message uh, would you like to leave for future generations? Uh, you will view or hear this interview. I 
guess I would say that it's not a matter of who can do it, obviously, because everybody <laughs> thought that a girl could do it, and hey, I survived, so. Um, it's a matter of fight for something that you believe in. And if you stop believing of it, then it's not worth fighting for. What did you fight for? I thought I was fighting for my country, and that's not the case. Know what you're fighting for. How about that? Because, yeah, after you're over there, you don't really know. Okay. Uh, is there anything you feel like we haven't discussed uh, or should be added this interview? If so, what? P.S. Girls that fight on missions, it sucks to take a piss. Seriously, that is a big deal. Can you go into detail? 18 hours on a mission is really hard when you have to take a pee. That's a big deal. You I couldn't didn't stop and go pee or anything? I mean, you could, but like... 35 guys watching you take a piss is not a good idea. So you just, I just held it for like 18 hours. They didn't come, did they come up with anything for you guys while you were there? Um, a month until we went home, they finally came up with this weird like, it was almost like a funnel with a tube. But that was a month until we went home and finally it was just like I've been holding it for 18, 18 hours a day so your little funnel is not going to make a difference in right. my life. Alright, anything else you wanted to add? That's, that's my legacy right there. <laughs> but right. you can't pee. Well, um we would all like to thank you for doing this interview for us. Um, thank you for serving, and we respect what you did. Yeah, cool.